Now that we've talked about the conservation of energy as a, a tool for solving dynamic problems, I want to take that a small step further and talk about uh, the use of power and what power means to us. So first, thinking about what power is, we can think of power as the rate at which work is done or uh, the rate maybe at which we input work or energy uh, into the system. And as a result, we might represent it as the first time derivative of energy. Uh, in this case, I'm using U, which you know we've, we've denoted as potential energy, also uh, used to represent work. We can also then write this as delta U over delta T. And in that case, we're treating it as more discrete units, um, small changes in energy uh, over small changes in time. We could also uh, think about this in terms of the first time derivative of W, if W is work, uh, and remember that we've previously used this dot notation to indicate that it's a time derivative. So a couple other things that kind of fall out of this then. One, we can represent work, or remember that we can represent work as a force applied over a distance. And therefore, if we assume uh, decide that there's going to be a constant force that's being applied, then we can break du into f times dr if, if r is position and write this as f dr dt. So basically what I have is a constant force being applied over a changing distance or changing position uh, with respect to a changing time. Now dr by dt should look somewhat familiar in that it is velocity, and therefore we can rewrite this equation as force times velocity. And that might be useful when it comes to understanding uh, the rate at which energy is being added to our system. Now the reason we might care about uh, the rate at which energy is being added is that lots of things that we might use to drive a system, such as a, a motor, um, an actuator, things like that, we don't necessarily specify them, you know, determine which one we're going to buy off the shelf uh, using how much uh, a measure of how much work they're going to put into our system because that doesn't really help us understand what size engine we might need. Instead, we need to know how much power we need to put into a system because any small little engine can put lots and lots of work into a system, but if it's undersized, it might take a long time. Uh, and therefore we size it on the basis of power. How quickly can it put that work uh, into the system? So it, it kind of helps with problems that we might look at later. Now, when it comes to units, we can kind of see from this, this force times distance what we have going on, uh, but let's just note that we have watts. Now, careful, this is W for watts rather than W for work up here. Uh, we know that uh, watts are then related to work uh, by joules, joules being the unit of energy or work uh, over time. And using that, that breakdown into Newton meters like we did last time, we can write this as Newton meters per second. <clears throat> so we also could look at the units of this, of course, as horsepower being a common uh, English unit for, for power. English units are never as nice to work with, uh, and therefore, you know, we want to be aware of a unit conversion that a horsepower is equal to 550 foot-pounds per second. So sometimes we might need to make that conversion. <clears throat> Next, I want to talk about efficiency. So of course, I'm sure you've heard of efficiency, and that comes up in many contexts we are going to define our efficiency simply as power out over power in. And under this definition, we would, have, we would always expect our efficiency to be less than one uh, in that the power out is always gonna be slightly less than the power coming into our, our system. 
And the reason for that loss or that, that uh, inefficiency is the loss due to a lot of different sources. It could be friction. Um, friction is a common uh, source of loss in a system. Heat, sometimes heat builds up due to that friction. Um, sometimes heat is a byproduct of whatever we're doing. Uh, light, noise, vibration, uh, all of these things are, are formulations of loss and that's it's energy being drained away from our system. And we don't always know or maybe we can't measure directly all of those various losses, but we can often measure the power that we're putting into something and the power that we're getting out of it. And as a result, we can calculate what that efficiency is. So efficiency is helpful uh, in dynamic systems in that you know, we might know that we're gonna draw a certain amount of power from the wall, from the, from the electrical plug, uh, but we don't necessarily know how much power we're gonna get out and how that influences the work that we are putting into our, our dynamic system when we evaluate it um, from an energy perspective. So power out and power in are gonna be our key. Sometimes we'll have a, a known efficiency. It might be an advertised um, piece of information for something like a motor, uh, but it's, it's useful from the perspective of how much power, how much work are we able to put in to our dynamic system. All right, thank you.